Someone asked me if I was contagious. Wow, somebody asked you that? Yeah. If you're and contagious. If I was contagious, yeah. People. And I just looked at them and make it all not contagious. Girl, you have a lot of patience. I'm just gonna say that. I, I don't even know if, if somebody asked me if I was contagious, if I would just be like, no, I'm not contagious. I'll probably have some choice words. I'll probably have- I wanted to, but I just walked away. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode on the Unfiltered Real Talk podcast. I'm your host, EJ, and I'm excited to bring you this bonus episode within the Hear Me Out mini series. As you guys know, I've been doing a mini series around being inclusive with persons with special needs. And this bonus episode is with a remarkable young lady here in Alberta doing exceptionally remarkable prolific, profounding, amazing things here in our province. So she contacted me on Instagram and wanted to come on board to share her story. And I was just excited to bring this journey and bring this conversation to you. So I want to let you know a little bit about our guest. So our guest is Love Preet. She's an athlete, a cyclist with cerebral palsy. She has won a number of awards and has been recognized as a leader here in our community. She has also won the Personal Inspiration Award from Aber Abilities Logist Society and has been recognized by a member of parliament in Calgary. She has also done quite a number of races, including half a marathon and has raised thousands of dollars for Cerebral Palsy Association of Alberta. Welcome, Love Preet. Did Thanks I do justice me. to your resume? Because I feel like I can go on and on about all the amazing things you've accomplished, but this is just a little bit. So how are you today? I'm and good. How are you? You're very good. Thank you for being here today. I am just really glad that you're here. Thank you so much. Thank so, you for letting me share my story. Of course. Thank you so much. So Tell us a little bit about Love Preet. Who are you? Let us get a feel for who you are. I am 41 years old, born and raised in Calgary, now living in Airdrie. Okay. I work as a data entry clerk. And I, like you said, I'm a cyclist. I'm a gym rat. Yeah. I have to gym like two, <laughs> three days a week or more. Wow. I work out every day. Wow. That's amazing. So you work out every day, seven days a week. Pretty much. Wow. What is it that gets you up in the morning and you're like, you know what? I have to go do stairs today. I have to go for a walk today. I have to go to the gym today. I I don't know. I set goals for myself. Mm -hmm. And to achieve them, I would do anything to achieve, to achieve them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I want us to talk about your journey, just who you are, all the accomplishments you've had down the road. I know that, for example, for your 40th uh, birthday, your 40th uh, memorial stairs in Calgary, and you did, you went up the, those stairs unassisted, and you wanted to do that for your 40th birthday. So I yes, wanted, I, I wanted to do something different. Something, mm -hmm. something I, that I haven't done before, right? Some, okay. Yeah, something unique. So tell us more about that. Tell us more about some of the things that you do as a cyclist, as an athlete. What is a day in your life? What does a day in your life look like? I usually wake up around 6.30, 7 o'clock, get dressed, and I have a bike. I have an exercise bike in my room, so I jump on the that, that that's the first thing I do when I okay. get dressed and ready for the day. I jump on that ride for like five kilometers. Then I then I go eat breakfast. 
clean up, go to the gym, bite some more, or I work out with my trainer. I've been working out with her for like six years now, six, seven years now. And I work out with her for an hour, come back home, take a break. And if I want, I can go bike again outside. Okay, wow. Then when I want to come in, get ready for dinner, take a shower, and spend time with my family. Wow. And you work as a data entry clerk, you said. Yeah, not right now because of COVID, but I still have that job. Okay, so tell us how, what it's like working, like somebody who, you know, has some movement limitations because of cerebral palsy. Can you share with us what that journey was like going to get a job, having to find a job? What are some of the challenges that you faced and how you overcame them? It was hard to find a job. Because everybody sees me, see the disability, they don't see the person. It was hard for me because people didn't accept me for my disability. They just saw a person with a disability. And when I found my job at a, as a data entry clerk, the person that, that interviewed me saw me more than just a person with a disability. And he wanted to give me a chance. And he did. And he, till this day, he thinks he says that he's made the right decision because he's never had a hardworking person in his office. That's determination. Absolutely. You know, um, on the third episode of this mini series that I'm doing, we also had uh, a guest who has cerebral palsy. And that's one of the things that he said that I found really provoking and it, it really struck me is that persons with disability many times oftentimes actually work harder than persons without because they want to prove themselves they want to show that they're we have capable to prove ourselves more there you go and yeah a person. yes and and for your boss for your supervisor to say that i find that you even work harder just goes without saying confirms what uh carlos said in this episode that i was just talking about so what, what are some of the um, benefits or what are some of the things that you enjoy the most about having a job, like working or volunteering or things like that? It gives me some kind of routine. Gives me some kind of freedom. Yeah. Something to do. Absolutely. Independence, to right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Something to look forward to. Something and to look forward to every day. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you on that one. And I think anyone can relate with that. I don't think it's necessarily about whether you have disabilities or not, or a special need or not. It's working many times, give people fulfillment, something to look forward to, something to feel like you're contributing to and that's totally true and that's why it's important that as employers who are you know giving people jobs and all that that we make sure that we are inclusive and that we are being open to ensuring that our job opportunities are available to persons who have special needs and making sure that the access is there so that they yes. can also and we're treated equally and treated equally let's talk about that so what are some of the, how do you talk about like what you face on a day-to-day, -day? going to grocery shopping, going to the movies, going to the library, you know, going to work, for example, how is it, how are you treated and how can you help us treat you better? To be honest, I, everybody treats me good. I get, once in a while, I get, I'll get people that stare at me. Or make rude comments, That's even right. when I go to the gym. Someone asked me if I was contagious. 
Wow, somebody asked you that? Yeah. If you're any, contagious. If I was contagious, yeah. People. And I just looked at them and make it all not contagious. Girl, you have a lot of patience. I'm just going to say that. I, I don't even know if, if somebody asked me if I was contagious, if I would just be like, no, I'm not contagious. I'll probably have some choice words. I'll probably have. I wanted to, but I just walked away. <laughs> You're the bigger person. You are. So talk to that person on this podcast right now. Let's assume that there are people like that who will listen to this episode one day who say really mean things for lack of a better word, such as, are you contagious? Let's talk to that person right now. What is something you would like to say to them? If you're listening or watching this episode today, what should they know? What should they learn? And how can they do better? I'm not contagious, first of all. I'm just like you. I have feelings. Um, you should you should think before you speak because you don't know what the other person is going through. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would say do your own research. You know, like there's something called Google. Google things. You know, approach that person with love. If you must say something to someone. If you have a question for me, come up to me and ask. And me. ask the question. Exactly. Just don't be rude. Don't be rude. Don't be me. You know, no. don't be unkind. No. Uh, it's just because somebody, I say this all the time on my podcast, just because somebody doesn't look like you, they don't sound like you, they don't do some of the things that you can do or that you do, does not mean that they are less than. And it is our responsibility as members of this community that we are in, as members of the world, that we treat one another with love and with kindness. And that is so crucial. It's so, it's so true. If I cut my finger, and if you cut your finger, the blood is red. Absolutely. So we're, we're all the same inside. We just look different from the outside. Absolutely. So tell us like two or three things that you feel can help us be more inclusive. Two or three things that you feel like as individuals, as communities, uh, as a people, what can we do to be better inclusive with persons with cerebral palsy or any form of disability? Be open-minded. Okay. Um, have patience with us. Because um, people with disabilities take longer time to do things. Just have patience with us. Yeah. And be kind and be more access, um, accepting of each other. Absolutely. And I want to switch things to an advice for persons with disabilities, persons who have cerebral palsy, as an example, who are struggling with being themselves, being um, who they truly want to be, putting themselves out there, facing whatever mountains or whatever battles that they have to face and overcoming them, who is struggling, you know, right now, especially in the middle of a, um, this COVID pandemic, COVID. Well, I guess it is yeah. an endemic now that it is what is being called, an epidemic rather is what is being called. So what are some advice that you can give to persons who have cerebral palsy or other forms of disability to help them be motivated, to stay motivated, to stay inspired, regardless of COVID or any other form of challenge that they may have today? Just follow your heart and follow your dreams. If you have a goal, if you have a goal, go for it. Anything's possible. Absolutely. Yeah, anything is possible. If you have a goal, go for it. Okay, Love Preet. So I want you to share with us some of your goals, uh, some of your plans for the year or for maybe the next couple of years. 
and tell us how you intend to accomplish some of those goals so that maybe other people listening can draw some inspiration from that. Um, one of my goals for this year, 2021, is to buy 2,000 kilometers by the end of the year. Wow. Right now, I'm over 1,300 kilometers. Wow, you've done 1,300 already? Already, yeah. Wow. Okay. And, and then mm -hmm. for next year, I'm, I will buy to climb the stairs at the bow tower building in the Calgary. I think that has 1,300 stairs. Wow. Or I want to, or another goal is to ride my bike from Can Canmore to Banff. Wow. How long is that from Canmore to Banff? Do you know? 20, over 20 kilometers, I think. If wow. I'm not wrong. Okay. Wow. Okay, thank you, Love Preet, for sharing that. I'm wondering if you can also share with us how you stay committed to your goals and also if you can advise us for those people who find it difficult to stay or stick to their goals, especially with regard to exercise. Any advice or any words that, of encouragement that you can share to help us stick to our goals? Um, I would say have a partner that has the same goals. Yeah. So you could inspire each other whenever you don't feel like working out. Yeah, absolutely. It. And have someone there to push you. Absolutely. I agree. Couldn't agree more with that. Thank you as well, Love Preet, for being here today. I want to remind our listeners that Love Preet is on Instagram. Uh, you can find her on social media. Go follow her there. Go see the amazing things that she's doing. I mean, Love Preet is just a remarkable young lady from Adria, Alberta, who has been doing amazing things and has been recognized wide and far for the amazing things that she's been doing, including inspiring many young women. And most important, my takeaway today is be yourself, be open, be patient, be respectable, and be kind to one another. That's my takeaway. So, Love Preet, before we close, is there anything that you would like to share that I haven't talked about today that you want to go ahead and just share? No, I just want to say thank you for letting me share my story with you. Yeah, you're welcome. So final word, I tend to do this in most of my conversations. If someone was listening to this conversation today, what is one key takeaway, one important point that you want them to go home with from this conversation? Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Yes, absolutely. And I'd never give up. Never give up. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it from Love Preet herself. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for being here today, Love Preet. It's been amazing. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome.